Welcome to LP Outdoors, the channel with everything the outdoor world has to offer. Cool. Yeah. Staring at me. <laughs> it's looking right at her. My very first Laker. They're huge. <laughs> I love them because they look like. The best eating fish out there. Yeah. Make sure you hit that subscribe button so you never miss any of these great adventures. It's going to be an epic fall. Hello everybody, I thought I'd do something a little different. Um, normally I put up my animals out in the barn, but I figured today I'd switch it up a bit. I'm going to use the uh, Hags muskrat clip or muskrat hook that you use to hook the tail. I've got it rigged up in my kitchen. I'm going to show you guys how I skin and put up a muskrat. So let's finish these muskrats up. It's quick and easy. I'll show you. All right, I'm going to show you guys here. got a couple big muskrats. I'm going to show you how to put them up. They're pretty easy to finish up here. Um, all you really need is something to either a gambrel or this is the hags hook that they have, special muskrat hook. What I love about this, and I haven't even used it on them yet, but I know it's gonna be great. You can put, you can hook the tail through that. And that's actually gonna allow you to have, you can put more pressure on the legs and pull, which usually if I just use the gambrel, pulling on a leg um, with the gambrel, they rip easy. So. This is going to be a game changer for muskrats. I do recommend that. Um, this year, I didn't used to do it, but I do it this year more. I've been brushing them out, you know, especially if you see you got some, most of the time it's wherever the, the trap hit the animal, it'll be a little messed up. Or if you see that they've got, you know, some burrs, which muskrats ain't gonna, muskrats don't usually have anything really wrong with them. This one's just a little damp still, but not bad. So just brush them out a little bit here, make them look nice. Um, all I use too for fleshing is a spoon. I like to use this big old spoon, and uh, yeah, a nice sharp knife too. You don't it don't take very many cuts on a muskrat, but good sharp knife is needed. So all right, let's try this out. Um, be careful doing this too, because it is sharp. You don't want to you don't want to put this hook through your hand. Wow, that's cool. Yep, hooks right there through the tail. That's perfect. Now, first thing I like to do, I'm gonna go slow. I can go a lot faster normally, but I like to cut these front legs off. Normally too, I would save the front and back legs for uh, food purposes, because they are tasty, but um, I'm not gonna do, I'm gonna use a different knife here. Um, I'm not gonna save this one only because I'm trying to get a bobcat, and this makes really good cat bait. So, yeah, I'm going to use my smaller knife here to make these cuts. For the back legs, I just cut around the legs. Now, what you want to do is take your knife. You're going to need a sharp knife. And cut straight up to the tail. Try to get it as straight as you can. And I try to run it right up the tail, just like that. Same on the other side. I am going to put gloves on. I forgot to do that. It saves my hands right. getting messy. Put some gloves on here, guys, just so that I can keep my hands from getting super messy. Now, after I make those cuts up the legs, that's when you can pull the, just peel the meat away from the legs. Or the skin, I should say. You can fit your finger in there. It, it's really easy to skin a muskrat. They've got, their skin pulls real nice. But just keep working your finger. Try to get it as much... Try to do it as, as best as you can to keep the meat off. That way you got less to pull off later. But I'll pull it up the tail just like that. Usually it'll rip, if not you can make a cut. Um, then I'll just work it back around this other leg. Just like this. Just keep slowly pulling that. You want to take ca caution and be careful doing this because if you're if you're too crazy and fast with it, you're gonna rip the guts and then it just makes the whole job a little harder so you know if you do take your time trust me you're saving yourself hassle in the long run plus they don't smell the best inside so let's see all right now I try to 
carefully fit my fingers between the stomach lining and the skin, just like this, and then you can slowly work your fingers through. Just like that till you're through the other side. And just keep peeling. It comes off fairly easy. But like I said, if you go too fast, you're just going to rip guts and everything and going to make more of a mess than you need to. And then you got more to clean up. I cut it off right up here by the butt. Uh, that stomach's ripping a little bit here. Not too bad, though. Again, keep uh, peeling it down. That's why you pull the... That's why you got to break those front legs off too, folks. That way you don't have anything to have to work around when you pull it down to the legs. You've, with the legs off, you can just pull out those holes. Okay, now I'm going to pull a little harder here. The stomach's trying to rip. <laughs> the tail's going to stay hooked up, but the stomach's trying to rip in half. All right, now see I pulled those front legs out. Like I said, you pull up to those and then pull them off. Now you're going to get stuck here at the head, but that's because you got to cut through the ears. Just like that. Pull it further. Going to get stuck again. That's your eyes. Cut right through that. This knife isn't sharp, as sharp as it should be. The eye holes shouldn't come out like that. They should be nice and round. If you have a bunch of hair come through your eye hole, it means you cut it too big, but it doesn't take away from the value. It just doesn't make it as pretty. But just carefully work your way down the nose. Usually when I get down to this point, I'll pull it. That way it comes right to the nose cut it off at the nose and then uh, cut it right down here around the teeth just like that boom nice skin ready to go then we'll have to flesh it so that's how you skin a muskrat pretty easy I'll show you guys how to flesh it I'm gonna finish up this other one fleshings pretty easy too um, again this this hags hook worked out nice especially for the tabletop and uh, I'm just going to throw this whole thing. Normally I'd save the skull and the meat, but I'm going to use that for bobcat bait. All right, guys, next up, you're going to want a flushing board. Um, you can buy one from the store or you can make one. The main thing that needs to happen, though, if, if you do make one, you want to make sure that one side is rounded out um, and nice and smooth. The, the other side, you know, can be flat, but you got to have one side that is nice and rounded out because this is the side that you're going to use to actually scrape the flesh. If you tried to do this on the wrong side, on the flat side, chances are you're going to rip through um, and hit grooves and stuff, and that's not good. So you want to do it on this side. Um, just put your put your rat up there just like that, nice and straight. Um, doesn't matter what side you start on, it all has to get done. But then again, I use my spoon, as you can see. Um, that's all that's needed to flush a rat, because there's not... You don't have the, the hard gristle and uh, and thick, thick fat like you do on a coon or a beaver or anything. Um, but yeah, just use the, the edge of the spoon just like this. When I was a kid, most of my life I did this with a fillet knife. The sharp edge too, I'd just scrape on the side, but... Uh, once I learned how to do it with a spoon, it's actually much easier, and you don't make holes. Sometimes you make a hole. If you if you end up finding a spot where the, the rat has a, a cyst or, or got bit, you know, there's usually bite marks on them because they do fight. Uh, don't worry about getting all the red off, okay? The red membrane is not really what you're worried about. It's the meat and the fat that you got to get off if you go too deep with these you're just going to mess them up but see there's not much really that comes off of these it's just the fat and the meat which a lot of that you can save time on by getting in the skinning process you can if you're slow enough skinning you can pull away a lot of the meat and a lot of the fat and keep it off your skin um 
a little more of this fat here. Just like that. Now we're going to spin it. And that's all you do. Just keep going around. Again, I'll hold the, the nose up here while I get that top part. You'll want to use caution around the eyes and around the legs because, you know, those are holes so you could tear them. So I try not to go too rough on them. Sometimes I'll hold the leg in place, the leg hole, and uh, I have found that you can get most of this by scraping upward on it. So that's nice because you do have a little problem sometimes getting it around them legs. But again, just scrape, scrape it down. Don't worry about getting all that red. Some of it has fat underneath and that's why you want to get the majority of it. But okay. I, told, I teared it right there because that was the um, that was the uh, gland. I want to get that out of there. And again, this should be the last spin. Again, most of the caution you want to have is around the legs and the face. Somebody said in one of my recent videos, you forgot to cut the lips off, but I'm telling you right now, don't do that on muskrats. You don't have to. That doesn't need to be done on them. Coons, yeah beaver stuff like that but you don't have to on rats in fact you want to leave them alone because you need that lip to hold right on the stretcher ready to be put on a stretcher. Little metal stretchers here, they're easy, quick, cheap. You want to squeeze, squeeze them shut a little bit just so that you can get them on. You want them, you want that skin to be on there nice and tight. Make it as straight as you can. First, I'll do the tail section here, pull down, tight as you can again, just like that. Now this section, the stomach, usually you got two little hooks here where you went around the sexual organs, just like that, that's it. Now as far as the nose go, okay, some people use paper clips in that, um, I don't, I used to, I don't think they hold that well. Uh, what I do, because I use pieces of wire to hold them up. So what I do, I just stick the wire through the nose, and then I wrap the wire. I just wrap it around like that, boom. It holds your nose in place. And then uh, I've got wires hanging all over my house where I hang them just to dry. It only takes, I don't know, four days, and that, that baby would be ready to rock. Ready to this season of LT Outdoors Trapping is brought to you by Bass Brothers Lures and Baits. They now have a website, so check it out so you can see what they got in stock. That is Bass Brothers lureandbaits.com God needs the devil. The Beatles needed the Rolling Stones. Even Diane Sawyer needed Katie Couric. Will you be my Katie Couric? <laughs>